The Lord said to his disciples, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. We notice in this gospel that Christ does not say, Make your light shine. He says, let your light so shine before the world, suggesting to us that this light is something eternal, something already burning within us, something that we have not created with our own, own hands, but perhaps something that we need to keep a light, to keep rekindling. St. Nikolai Belomirovich calls us, calls the faithful, calls us vigil lamps. Because our faith is the light. Our faith is the light of Christ. We are the embodiment of it. Christ said, I am the light of the world. The vigil lamp reminds us of the light of Christ, which illumines our souls and the world. The gospel today is spoken, and right before it, Christ lists the Beatitudes, and we heard them just earlier in the service. The Beatitudes could be said be a roadmap for our prayer life in the church. Those who mourn, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, seeking mercy as set in motion, but also mercy that we are to learn for ourselves and how to be merciful to others, with the hope of this resulting in Christ's peace, with the hope of rekindling our illumination with the light of Christ. The light we strive for, brothers and sisters, is exactly that, is Christ in our lives. St. John Chrysostom takes this passage and he takes it to another level. He says, Christ not only calls us to be prayerful, but also to be bold. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither can men light a candle and put it under a bushel. St. John asks, what good is it to the world if that which we labor for, our light, is hidden? What good is it if the light of Christ is hidden? If we too, if we are too worried, what if we are too worried about what others will think of us as to hide our fruits of labor, our, our light? It does not do the world any good, he says. As today we mark the fathers of the Fourth Ecumenical Council, otherwise known as Council, who in boldness spoke and did not hide their light to the world being able to preserve the Christological teachings of Christ's two natures, one person being truly God and truly man. Imagine if they did not do this. Imagine if they did not have this boldness. Where would the church be today? It's, it's hard to tell. If you listen to the Apolitician, which was part of today's morning board rules, which unfortunately we were not able to serve, it embodies this, and it summarizes today's feast. It says, Thou, O Christ, art our God of exceeding praise, who didst establish our holy fathers as luminous stars, as luminous stars upon the earth, and through them that guide us unto the true faith, O most merciful one, glory to thee. Our fathers are likened to luminous stars, and it is Christ that established them. It is our light in the church, our liturgical light, that defines this moment for us in communion with Christ, within his church, where he is fully manifested through his mysteries, through his crucifixion and resurrection, where his crucifixion and his resurrection become our crucifixion, where we become the light of the world. How awesome is this to think about that? As we sit here, we are going through that process. We are living that. We are being, right now, as we serve, we are the light of the world. Even as we are on camera, hopefully, we are being the light of the world. In today's epistle, St. Paul writes to Titus and says, My son, the saying is sure, I desire you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to apply themselves to good deeds to good deeds, to the good things, to the truth. 
These are excellent and profitable for men. He goes on to say, avoid stupid controversies, genealogies, and dissensions, and quarrels over the law, things that are things that actually have already been won for us. Why quarrel over them? They've been won. Christ has taken over the world. His, 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 his light shines through the world. We do need to speak the truth, but there are times when we need to say, well, you know, this has been won for us. We don't need to quarrel and quarrel all of the time. He says, don't waste your time with the quarrels and squabbling back and forth with, with what is in the world, the dead things, but insist and insist and teach our people to apply themselves, apply themselves to the good deeds, the truth, as he says, so as to help the cases of urgent need and to not be unfruitful. This is fairly difficult, especially in this day and age. It's fairly difficult to do. Some would say impossible. Uh, but it is our calling as Orthodox Christians. And I would like to leave you with this, brothers and sisters, a note that I saw today, actually I saw a few times this week on the internet. Um, it was written by Father Seraphim Rose, who I, I, I admit I don't read enough um, or too often, but I, I find a lot of his writings to be valuable and relevant today. But he writes, let us not, who would be Christians, expect anything else from it than to be crucified. For to be Christian is to be crucified. In this time and at any time since Christ came for the first time, his life is the example and warning to us all. We must be crucified personally, mystically, for through crucifixion is the only path to resurrection. If we would rise with Christ, we must first be humbled with him even to the ultimate humiliation being devoured and spit forth by the uncomprehending world. And we must be crucified outwardly in the eyes of the world. For Christ's kingdom is not of this world, and the world cannot bear it, even a single representative, even for a single moment. The world can only accept Antichrist, now or at any time. No wonder then, he says, that it is hard to be Christian he says, it is not hard, it is impossible. No one can knowingly accept a way of life which the more truly it is lived, leads the more surely to one's own destruction. And listen to this, he says, and this is why we constantly rebel. We try to make our lives easier. We try to be half Christian. We try to make the best of both worlds. We must ultimately choose. Our felicity lies in one world or the other, not both. God give us the strength to pursue the path of crucifixion. There is no other way to be Christian. Brothers and sisters, you are the light of the world. Let us continue to be as St. Nikolai calls us, vigil lamps, so that all will know that Christ has overcome the world. Let our souls not sleep, for when our soul sleeps, the fear is there, we may forget that we are children of light, and we fill our souls with frivolous things, with the frivolous things of the world. It is so easy to do this. It is so easy to be half Christian during these days. It is so easy to worry about what the world thinks of us than to apply ourselves to the good deeds, to the good things. Christ has overcome the world. Ours is to keep going back to him over and over again in his church through his mysteries so that our light is rekindled. To be bold and to be walking vigil lamps so that the church fathers, so like the church fathers of Chalcedon, we too can be luminous stars upon the earth. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.